Hey guys, it's Miss Kenny again. For today's virtual lesson, I'm going to go over some drawing tips. These tips are going to be super basic and very easy, and you can continue to use them in any piece of art that you make in the future. The first technique that I want to talk about is called stippling. This technique is really time consuming, but it can be kind of fun and meditative. If we zoom in, you can see that this is completely made up of dots. There is no line, there is no shading. It is all just little points. Alrighty, so let's get started on how to do stippling. Stippling, like I said, can be very time consuming, but I think it is kind of fun and you can almost meditate through this process. Um, so stippling is done completely with just dots. So there is no actual line making at all. You only want to use the very tip of whatever it is that you're using. I'm using a Sharpie so that it's easy to see on the, com on the computer. And just dot as much as you can. This is how you can create value or shading. So if you wanted one side of your circle to be way darker, then you want to put your dots very close to each other. You don't have to worry about your dots overlapping on through. And so as you can see, this is very time consuming. This takes a while, but it can be kind of fun. There is this whole type of art that is based off of stippling and it is called pointillism. Pointillism uses nothing but small dots or poke prints um, to make their whole art composition, to make their whole piece. So now what I'm going to do, I feel like I have established a pretty even tone on this side with just the dots. So I'm going to try to get this to be a gradient, to be less dark through this top half of the circle. So I am going to have more and more space between the dots that I make to try to get it to look as if it is going from dark to light. So on the part where I have, on the part where I want it to be the lightest, I want to have very little dots and the part where you want it to be the darkest is where you want to have the highest concentration or the highest number of dots. Bring it closer. You can see how there is a clear distinction between what is a darker value and what is a lighter value. You can see how in the darker value over here, I made sure to put the dots very close together. And over here, I made sure to space them out a little bit. So there is the finished stippling circle. The next technique that I want to show you is called hatching. Hatching is used to create really smooth gradients and transitions, and it can be used for literally anything. So if we zoom into my example, we see that all of the shading is done with line, and all of the lines are going the same way. There is no crossover between the lines. Next, we are going to talk about hatching. Hatching is very easy, and I'm sure most of you have actually done this before without realizing that that's what you were doing. So I am going to do yet another circle. And on this one, I'm gonna use some colored pencils on half of it and um, the Sharpie on the other half. So I'm gonna use the Sharpie so that you understand where your lines should be and um, how they should flow over whatever it is that you're coloring. So if I am doing hatching, all of my lines are going in the same direction. None of my lines will ever cross over each other. So if I have this, all of my lines are going to go down. I'm going to pick up my pencil after I'm done every time and start a new line. I don't want to have any of this go because with this, the value towards the outside of them are darker, towards the middle, it's lighter. And that's just because of where the mark making is most heavy. So if you make sure to pick up your pencil and draw a line each time, not crossing over one another, what you would be left with is this really nice flowing gradient. 
So that was dead, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when I use a colored pencil. I'm not and I'm also going to show you how this is a really easy way to make gradients. Um, I know sometimes I've had a conversation with some of you about how to create gradients, but um, this is a good reminder. So I am picking up my pencil after each line that I make. Okay, so as we can see, there is a very clear, flat kind of tone over here. If you want to create a gradient, hatching is, and cross-hatching are probably going to be the way to go. They're the easiest ones. So I have the purple that has already been hatched and they're going this way. So I'm going to take a different color and I'm going to hatch in the same direction. And I'm going to go in really lightly where the purple left off. I'm not going to go completely in, into the purple, but I am hatching in the same direction as the purple. Bring it down a little bit further. So that's your first step to creating a gradient. As you can see, it goes from a darker purple to a lighter purple to a kind of purple blue to the blue. This is really, really easy to do with hatching. You can really control where you want your gradient to go, how dark you want it to go, and since it's hatching, it all flows into each other really well. The last little tip that I would have for this and for gradients is if this just isn't looking quite as blended as you want it to, all you have to do is take a light color, like the ones that you've used, I'm gonna use the light blue, or a white colored pencil would also work great. White would work on any color. And you want to lightly go back in the areas where your gradient kind of mixes, where the two colors meet. And you want to take this lighter color and you want to hatch in the same direction. And you are just building up this gradient. It just makes it look really nice. So literally all I used to create that little gradient was these three colors. A purple, a dark blue, and a light blue. And that's all you need. The last technique that I'm going to show you is called cross hatching. This is almost exactly the same as hatching. However, the lines are now placed at an angle, crossing each other instead of all going the same direction. So when we zoom into this example, you can see that there are still the same sets of lines as there was in hatching. However, now there are two sets of them and they seem to cross over each other. They can cross over vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. For the last technique, cross hatching, this is a lot like hatching. However, now, before when I said that you don't want any of the lines to cross like this, like an X, now you do. So I'm going to go ahead and I will draw my circle for this last one. I'm going to use two different colors for this. And then I will also um, of marker. I'm going to use two different color markers to show you on the circle. And then in the square, I will cross hatch with some colored pencils so that you can see how that works too. So I'm going to use a black Sharpie first. Same with the hatching. You want it to go one way. You can really control value with hatching based off of how far apart or how close together your lines are. So if I wanted to keep it kind of a light middle gray, I might stay really far. If I want it to get darker, I'm gonna make my lines get closer and closer together. And that gives whatever it is that you're coloring a sense of weight. Okay. So that is the first step for cross hatching. You want to hatch. Now you are going to cross hatch, which literally means you are just going to draw your lines going the other direction. So for the second color, I'm gonna use a purple marker. I'm going to go the opposite direction of what I did. This gives us more um, depth so that is how we cross hatch. As you can see, the lines are crossing each other. 
but both sets of lines only go one direction. Again, there is no zigzagging or anything like that. So now I'm going to show you in the little square with some colored pencils. I'm going to use some reds and pinks. I'm going to go in and hatch from one direction in my square. I'm being very careful to pick up my pencil after each line has been made. Okay, All of my lines are going in the same direction. Okay, there's my square that has been hatched in one direction. Now I'm going to crosshatch it. You should crosshatch with a different color and we can see how that might turn out. This I crosshatch straight up and down and diagonal. This time I'm going to do um, vertically and horizontally. So, again, just picking up your pencil once each line has gone. If you are crosshatching with different colors, you can create a really interesting gradient. You could create some really interesting colors. So it is all up to you. I'm going to crosshatch with three different colors on this bottom half so that you can see what that looks like. So there is the finished square. You can see at the top that it is clearly all the same color versus at the bottom how there is multiple colors that are mixing in and creating the same color.